of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My beloved one today is 14th day of May being Sunday, and she's Sunday of Easter season. Our readings will be coming from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 5 to 8, and verse 14 to 17. A response to Psalm will come from Psalm 66, verse 1. A second reading will come from first letters in Peter chapter 3, verse 15 to 18. A gospel message will come from John Gospel chapter 14, verse 15 to 21. The theme of our message today is He who has my commandments and keep them is the one who loves me. He who has my commandments and keep them is the one who loved me. Jesus was telling us this today. And if you love me, my father will love you, and I will love you too, and manifest myself to you. So the only way God can manifest himself is you by your love and keep, command and keeping them. And the only way you can be in love of father and the son is to hear the commandments and keep them. There's no magic about that. And that why, having said this to the disciples, Jesus went for that to tell them. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father to send you a counselor who will be with you forever if you keep my commandments. And he goes for that to tell them again. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. We'll give you the spirit the world cannot receive. Because they neither know it, nor do they see it. But you know the spirit. Because you have kept the commandments. And the word is true. The word is spirit. So when you keep these commandments and keep them, automatically you are in the spirit of God. You are in the spirit of truth. It's in you. And I want you to wait for that to tell them. That time you will know that the Father is in me, and I'm in the Father, and you are in me. The only way you can be in union with the Father and Son is keeping the commandments of God. No magic about this. And you just say, if you know these words and keep them, has the man keep them, means you love me. And my Father will love you, and I will love you. I manifest myself to you. I manifest myself in you. Because Jesus told us earlier, if you believe in me, believe is to be obey God. That's what faith is all about, obedience to God. He said, anyone who believes in me will do the same work I'm doing, even no more, because I'm going to the Father. You can see John 14, 15. John chapter 14, verse 12. You can see it happen like that. And now why today Jesus have not said this. That when you keep the command, I'll manifest myself to you. And that's why today, Peter, in order to confirm this manifestation, look at what Peter told his fellows. In your hearts, reverence Christ as Lord. Yes. In your hearts. When the word is in you and you are keeping it, you are reverencing Christ. Always be pre- always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls on you to account for your hope in him. Always be ready. And when you are doing that, be gentle and with great reverence and with a clear conscience so that when people begin to accuse you, abuse you for being in Christ, they will be put to shame because they will discover that at the end of the day they are telling falsehood. They will be put to shame. Not like people who oppose the AP presidential kind of way, put to shame at the end of the day. Want to accuse him. 
And that's why today Peter has to tell us further the, the importance of being in this God and the God being in you. Keep by keeping the word. You see, when you are keeping the word, it's good to suffer for doing right than for doing wrong. Christ himself, who you are following, who is in you, suffered for sinners when he was not a sinner. For the unrighteous, when he was righteous. So it's good to suffer. When you are in Christ, you should be ready to suffer for good you did, not for the evil you did. You have no provision for evil in your life. And now Peter continued to admonish them and telling them, look at it. For Christ also died for sinners. For all. That he might bring us to God. You see, all your effort is to bring people to God. Being put to death in the flesh, but alive in the spirit. They can punish you, they can persecute you in the flesh, but you are alive in the spirit. When you are keeping the word. And then why do they, they show us Philip who is keeping the word? He has the word and he's keeping them. And because of that, when the church is under persecution, Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed to them the Christ who was crucified, but was risen from the dead. He proclaimed it. And we're told that the multitude of one accord give heed to what was said by Philip. They gave, we all, majority, majority of people kept, keep to heed to the word. How, why did they keep to? Because they have seen the signs and wonders he walked. People who are possessed by evil spirits, the spirits is crying and coming out of them. People who are paralyzed and lame and now walking healed. This whole city was filled with joy. God started manifesting himself in Philip because he kept the word and the word is in him. Remember what Jesus told us. If the word is in you and I'm in you, ask for anything, you will get it. You see how Philip went about crusading for souls and we are told the majority of people followed him. He went. Many Samaritans turned back, turned to God. And when John the church in Jerusalem had about this success of mission. They sent Peter and John, who went to there and prayed for them to have the Holy Spirit. They have not received the Spirit. And when they lay hand upon them, they received the Holy Spirit. That's what you see the Bishop going to pastoral visit, to lay hand on the newly baptized, and they were already prepared for this mission. You lay hand on them and they will receive the Holy Spirit. If you are not receiving the mission, you are not prepared for it. Or you don't know about it. Or you haven't seen it. But you have, it's in you if you are keeping the word. And now why Philip succeeded greatly. And many people turned to him. Because of the sign. Why is this sign of wonder not falling on these days? Because we are not in the world. And we are not keeping the word. Yes, there is no secret about it. If you keep the word absolutely and the word becomes your life. Automatically. God, Jesus said, I will. I will love you. My father will love you. And I will manifest myself in you. I'll be testimony to you. I'll confirm your ministry. No one the psalmist who understood this so may say so well. Cry out with joy to God or the earth. Cry out with joy to God or the earth. He's the one who turned us around, who healed our sickness, who made the paradise to walk who cast our demons out of us and put the Spirit of God in us. And what the cry, the cry out joy to God, all the earth. Yes, cry out. If not, what could you have been? I've been possessed, I've been sick, I've been paralyzed, I've been lame. Nothing will help you out of it. Let like the worsens. But when in Christ, all this is become your privilege and rise. May God help us understand today that to keep the commandments of God, to have the word of God, commandments of, and keep them, will make means you love God. And Father will love you, Son will love you, and manifest Himself to you. And that's the only way you can do. You can see yourself suffering for righteousness and being persecuted. But that doesn't matter. They persecute the flesh, but not the spirit in you. May God help us understand this message today. The secret of being in God and God in us, we ask through Christ our Lord. 
the Lord be with you. May the blessings of Almighty God be upon all of us as we keep the word of God so that Christ himself will manifest himself in us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you all. Yeah, 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 yeah.